so hello, welcome everybody. Um, so uh, I'm a long-term mapper uh, since 10 years now, probably better known by some of you by Lonvia, and also a software developer. And I want to talk about addresses in OSM today. If I say addresses, you probably think about this kind of address, so the one you put on a letter, the older of us remember this, or for the younger of you, the one you put in the Amazon um, field, so you get your stuff delivered. And actually, if you look it up, uh, Merriam Webster agrees with you, so an address is a place where a person can be communicated with. Um, but actually, it's not exactly what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is more location descriptions. So any textual description um, that can tell you where a geographic lo location is. So to give you an example, recently I found a mapper in Bern who had started to do exactly this kind of thing. So this is in German, but it basically says, this fountain is on the west side of the building Hopfengut in Brunbadstraße 50 in Bern. So this is the kind of location description we are talking about. Now you can argue um, if you want to put this in OSM, but it's clear that this kind of thing is useful. Um, so my personal motivation on this, I'm actually the developer of the search engine that is behind the search box on the OSM uh, main site, Nominatim. And there you need this textual description in two forms. So once you put it in, so we have to understand it, but what's more important today is uh, when you get your results back, you get this list of results which is actually, actually a location description. And people have complaining about it, that um, there's too much in it, there's too little in it, or it's plain wrong. And actually they're right, so I wasn't, wanted to look into how to make this better. And I'm going to present today uh, my findings about the OSM data, what we can use. So first thing, generally what people say, why don't you just put my postal address there? And they kind of had a point. It's not as easy as it sounds, as always. But as they have a point, let's look into why postal addresses are actually so good about this. So one of the things is, postal addresses have been invented before computers. And that means they're really for humans. And that's one we, what we want to have now here. If you have computers, just give them a coordinate. Don't translate it in three words, that's stupid. Um, just, we wanted something humans can understand. And there's a couple of things which are important there. The first is, you should use well-known point of reference. So people know what the city names are, what the street names are, and if you don't know them, there are even signs up there where you can look at them and confirm that you're actually at the right location. The second thing is, there's always a hierarchic structure. So the standard address goes something like this, uh, you have a country, a city, a street, and a house number. And this is good because depending on how well people know the location, they always can kind of locate the object. So in this case, I don't know Long Beach, but if this address is presented to me, I know where California is, which already helps that I know it's not an address in Germany. So this is also what you want. The other thing is, are you, no? Um, where postal addresses exist, they have a good coverage. So you have one generally for each uh, building. But this is actually where the problem starts if you want to use postal addresses as a location description because they're only there where there are people. So you don't have uh, addresses, say, for a monument, unless you're in Switzerland, I think they have them there. Um, you don't have them in uninhabited places for mountains or something. And, of course, you have to live in a country where they have invented or come up with a postal address system. And that's actually not too many of them. It's quite difficult to figure out how many exactly. So let's have a look at OSM instead and see what we have. So if we start with the postal addresses, the tag you use here are the uh, address tags. There are quite a lot of them. We get to this in a second. But let's first of all look into what's the coverage is at the moment. So what I did is I, looked, uh, I took uh, all the objects in OSM which have some kind of address tag and looked what, uh, how many addresses there are per inhabitant in each country. And that's what I came up with. So what you can see is the winner in this category is the Netherlands, which actually have an address for less than two people. So I no, don't know what they're doing. Um, and other than, other than this, you see there are a few imports where uh, coverage goes quite well. If you go to the south of the earth, coverage gets less and less. So yes, that's a good place to start with, but um, we certainly will need something else than address tags 
to um, actually generate our location description. So if you look a little bit more into the address tags, so as you can see, there are about 84 million address, um, objects in total. And if you start from the lowest level of our address, that would of course be the house number. And actually 80 million of these objects have a house number. And there is no other tag which uh, describes anything else on, this, on the lowest level, let's say. There is a little bit of address house name, most notably in Great Britain, um, in the rural areas. But apart from this, there is not much else. So I guess a house number is a really good base to have. Um, I've added a couple of other things here with construct, uh, conscription numbers and street numbers, so the Austrians uh, will probably know this. But they generally are added in addition. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about interpolations. Uh, that's the next talk for you. Uh, and there's also some attempts to add flats and units, which apparently are part of some postal addresses uh, in some countries, but there's not that uh, much coverage yet there. So address house number is good. Next question is, what does the address house number refer to? And there you find two tags at the moment. So address street, that's your average size uh, street address, uh, which apparently most of the countries have. We have 70 million. And a couple of years ago, um, people started to use address place, which is for uh, villages, for example, which don't really name the uh, house numbers after the single streets, but say we have one size fits all for the entire village. So of those, we have uh, 7.4 million. And again, looking into the database, I couldn't find much other things. So it seems that these two addressing systems are enough to cover all uh, um, usages in the world. Maybe they aren't because people who don't fit in there just haven't mapped it. I don't know. One thing I found when actually looking into the wiki is that Japan has its own addressing system. It's, it's really, it has really nice pictures, so it is a block-based system where you go from block to uh, quarter in your city to, to city and so on. Unfortunately, it's all in Japanese, so it's really hard to implement. So if you have your own addressing system in your country, please translate it to English so other people can use it. If you then go further up, if you have the street now, it actually gets really messy with the address tags. So you see here, this is a little bit... Uh, scaled with the number of texts we have. You find city uh, quite a lot. Also country, which is uh, only marginally of use. But apart from this, there are lots of texts in use, and it's not really clear what the hierarchy here is. And this is a problem if you want to have a location description, you want to sort your address text. And we don't have any uh, form in, our, in the wiki or anywhere which says what the hierarchy should be. Okay. So what else do we do if the address tags are not enough? The next thing the, to look, look at are administrative boundaries. So they're nice because they have this admin level tag, which actually has, is a number from 1 to 11. So you have your hierarchy here. But uh, the question is, what's the coverage? Uh, again, I've made a little map. So country coverage is totally fine. Um, so this is the map for levels Three, to four, three and four, also up to four. So this should roughly be state level. And you see coverage is really nice. So this is something you can totally use up to level four, just use this and be done with it. If you go further down until level six, which should be county uh, level about, it gets a little bit more patchy, but it's actually not too bad. So Africa is missing and the uninhabited areas of Australia and Canada, um, but it's still quite good. If you go further down to city level, it really now it gets to show that the, uh, most of Europe is complete, otherwise it looks a little bit worse. And if you go further down to 11, which is suburb level, then yeah, there's mostly nothing. And actually, if you zoom even in into Europe, this is interesting because you see it's not uniform for the, uh, for the countries. So you can't even say, oh, for this country, I have level one to six, and they mean this and this. Apparently, there is still uh, some discrepancy. Uh, what you see in Germany here, especially, is there is a difference between how rural areas work and urban areas. And this is actually something we haven't really covered in our, uh, in our tagging, but it's important to know. So 
Also, administrative areas are not always nice to work with. I give you two examples. One is the US. So city boundaries in the US are always fun to look at. So they are basically completely full with holes. And of course, if you have this little hole there in the inner city, you still want to say that things within this hole are in Riley, uh, US, and you don't want to say, oh, that's outside in just the county. So I have no idea what the administration is doing there, but this is, uh, this is one of the problems. And it gets even worse in rural uh, US, where you generally have a little town which really has the admin, admin, main administrative boundaries for the town. And the postal city, so everything that belongs to the town in terms of postal address, is much, much larger. And we haven't mapped any of this. Another example is actually Germany, which uh, you would think works better, but it has these interesting things. All these yellow dots you see here are so-called um, city counties, you could say. So basically, because it's a bigger city, we don't have county and then city levels, but we just leave one out and we just have the county. And for Berlin and Hamburg, it's even worse. So you are at state level and that's all you get. That's also your city boundary. And this is problematic because you really need to know uh, what each admin level uh, corresponds to. We get to this in a second because we have these things at the address tags where you say address county, address city, and so on. And if you want to actually make a correspondence with this, then you are in trouble if admin levels mean something different in the same country. OK, so this is the administrative levels. Then, oh, yeah, I've got one thing, which is the mappers. Uh, the other problem with admin levels is uh, they have added a lot of uh, admin boundaries now. Just to give you two examples, <laughs> France has added another level uh, to distinguish between France mainland and France overseas, which might be interesting to show in your location description, but maybe not. And another example, in Germany, there is a level for so-called state district border, which I, I'm from Germany, but still only learned about that this exists because uh, I looked in OSM. So you really would never, ever show this. It just confuses people. OK, so this was the administrative boundaries. If you don't have them, the next thing you have to resort to are place nodes. And place nodes are difficult because, of course, there it gets uh, a bit squishy what place node uh, uh, location actually belongs to. You basically have to go to, okay, if it's the closest one, then I take it. Um, so place nodes are actually not nice. If you can, map, a, map an area for your place. If you look at, uh, here I looked actually at the wiki, what exists, because again, uh, in the database, it's not very clear. So as I already said, country, state, region, we can forget about this because we have the admin boundaries, which are perfect. Well, almost. So the question is what to do with the county place nodes. Uh, if you look at the distribution, there are some countries which are actually quite extensive. But if you now uh, just gray out all the countries where we have realized, OK, we have admin boundaries there already. So there's a couple that are left over. Uh, Noticeably, I think New Guinea this is, and Pakistan. Um, so you really want to probably include this for countries which uh, don't have the admin boundaries. And this is still quite clear where to put it. And then we get to the other place values. And there we have the same again that I already mentioned with um, address tags. So there's a lot of different uh, values. It's in the wiki already distinguishing a little bit between urban uh, places and rural places but not really that well. And the problem is that people are using the hierarchies here in a very uh, different way. So if you take place Hamlet, which is probably one of the most notorical one, this may be its own incorporated place, which you want to show, or it may be just a part of a village, because two villages just fuse together. And then you really don't know what to do with it. Another example is uh, if you have a big city, so you have a lot of uh, boroughs which are mapped as place nodes, but there is the inner city which is not mapped as a borough because it's the city itself, there's only the place city. And one doesn't know that this actually is at the same level or should be or not really is because it's, the city is the whole thing but at the same time it's a borough. And we don't really have any um, classification for this. So that's the current state of the database. So what do we do with this data? 
So here's my uh, proposal for an algorithm that you want to do if you want to have your location data. So first of all, look at the address tags. Look what there are, sort them appropriately, and then check if for the country you're in, you have everything you want. If you have, that's fine, you're done. If you haven't, then look at the administrative boundaries. Again, sort them by admin level, Move, remove the ones which nobody knows about. The other ones you should uh, also, again, classify by country, city, suburb, and so on. And then again, you have a list which you may or may not use. Uh, if, you, if everything is in there, then you're done again. If this still doesn't work, um, you, still, uh, you have to look at the place nodes, where, again, you have to remove everything you already, is already covered with your admin boundaries. and then sort somehow the remaining ones and just use the closest one you find. And hopefully you get a nice um, address out of this. So, and as I said, this is the theory in practice. Everything that's read here is still a problem. So I don't know how to sort address tags. I don't know what the expected parts in an address for a country actually are. We don't know what the well-known or less-known levels uh, for admin levels are for each country, or what type they have. And finally, we don't know how to sort the nodes. So you as a mapper, there's uh, two things you can do. First, first of all, for tagging the addresses, if you want to do this, so here's my recommendation. First, always add something like house number or house name, if this is your uh, case in your area. Always at the address street or at the place tag. Please don't add both. That doesn't make sense. Either your house number belongs to a street or it doesn't. And uh, then if you want to add the rest of the address, please do so. But be aware that this is not an ISIN tag. So please only add the address tags which are really part of your postal address. That makes it then easier to process the uh, address. And if all these autos tags I just uh, explained don't fit, then please invent new ones, but don't forget to uh, document it in the wiki so somebody can find it. And if you want to go further than this, then I'd really appreciate some help in making sense of the different uh, texts I just uh, presented. So the most important thing is we somehow need a relationship between admin levels, place notes, and address tags. Uh, need to put them in a hierarchy and need to say which ones are important or not. So it would be really, really nice if we have some system which works all over the world, of course. Uh, there have been some attempts, for example, for into place notes to add an admin level there, which might not be bad. Um, but looking at the data, I suspect that we can do this only per country because the countries are just too different uh, in their characteristics. But even having this per country would be uh, a nice start. So to give you an example, when looking at this Japanese example I gave before, I also found this little spreadsheet here where they had done exactly what I was looking for. So it's a little bit small, I apologize, but what they did is actually say, okay, these are the levels we have in our country, use this for the admin level, use this for the place, and use this for the address, and they do this actually for all three addressing systems they have in, uh, in Japan. So I'm not sure yet how to do this, but we should get to a system where we have this for every country, and this would really make it easier for data consumers like Nominatim uh, to really make sense of the data and to improve the search results you see uh, in Nominatim. So that's, that's it from me. So please, if you just said, oh, but we in our country already have this all sorted out, come to me, talk to me, and uh, tell me about it. Or also, if you come from a country where you have an addressing system which nobody knows about and which doesn't fit in any level, I'd like to hear about this too and see uh, where we can get from there. Thank you. So thank you for this interesting presentation. Are there questions? Yes. So hello, does Naminatim support uh, machine-readable rules and how one country has its addresses and how another has? It doesn't yet, but the plan is to have something like this. 
the question is how to do it. So that's why I'm now trying to collect what cases we actually have, so we can actually write a rule system which uh, works for everybody. Yes. You haven't mentioned postal codes, which are a key part of addresses in many country. Yes, that's deliberately because it's not really that important for the location description I was talking about. And also, they actually don't fit my criteria of human readable addresses because they're not really useful in, for finding something. Um, so this is a bit of a separate problem, uh, especially as there we don't have areas at all as well. But basically, those we have to, uh, or nominatum also does, uh, process them completely apart from everything else. And yeah, if you're interested, I can later tell you a little bit about what it's doing and trying to do. Other questions? So do you think it would work actually without hierarchies? So could you build a search engine without the hierarchies? but instead just naming the, uh, the place types as they are named in a particular country, such as a parish or a suburb or a... Um, do you, you think it's doable? Um, it depends what you want to do. So for finding things, yes, totally. That's, that's enough. But not for presenting you the results. You don't want to have a list there with that country um, is this and this, state is this and this. Um, it wouldn't be readable at all. But then it's so, only about address formatting, right? And this, yeah, this is then mostly about address format. Um, so if you tell me, okay, this is the, uh, the parts of our address, then that's fine. I, I can uh, process something like this. But only having this information, you still need. But if you, if you know the parts, putting them in order is uh, pretty simple. Well, assuming that they are hierarchical, ordered. Okay, yes, that's true. And I think that's a huge challenge across geographies. Sometimes the hierarchy just isn't there. Well, hopefully per country, but I don't know. Yeah, we, we have to see. Okay. One more question? No, One from so my side. Excuse me. Yeah. Actually, do you propose any international standard for the addressing system? I mean, for, because every country, people write their address in their own way, like for U Europeans and the U.S. Sorry. countries. Sorry, so I couldn't, I couldn't. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Yo, sorry. Can you, uh, I mean, do you propose any international address system so that people can follow that in their own country? Like sub, some, in some country, people write house number, street number, and zip code, and country. In some pe country, like uh, people write some nearby location, I mean like some identification point. So do you propose some, inter I mean, some in standard to be follow for the addressing system? Uh, so I'm not proposing to have one size fits all for the whole, uh, for the whole earth. So actually what I would prefer is that you and your country come up with a system which kind of fits into our current addressing scheme for, uh, scheme for example. And then we try to incorporate it. Um, the whole, we, we do have a 40, I think you're referring to just saying something like uh, three houses behind the church or something. Yes. You? Yeah, right. that's, so this one, we have the address full tag for this, but actually I found it, it's not very useful because um, you never know what it refers to. So if you look at the values currently, which are used for address full, sometimes people put the whole address, including the country in there. Sometimes you really have just this part. So I think we need a new, uh, probably a new tech for this. But this is one of the things, yeah, I, I think uh, one of the addressing system we don't do at all at the moment. But yeah, come up with a, with a good tech and this can be incorporated. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Yes? Uh, hi. Um, kind of follow up to that previous question. Is there some kind of data about businesses uh, that you have? So I could say, like, next to a McDonald's, for example, that, you know, it will human, really human readable. Yes, this, actually, this is a little bit of a different approach you would do, which I'm not trying to do, which uh, goes in the direction of landmarking. 
So you want to find interesting places in your city and then use them as a point of reference. Uh, but we don't have anything at all in the, uh, in the database, I think, at the moment to mark them. The question is if you could kind of find them by analyzing the data, but I have a little bit of doubt. But I'd really love to look that somebody looks into this kind of landmarking, because this would also be for routing, just perfect. So go left after the McDonald's, then right after the uh, old factory, which was torn down in 1964, and this, this would be nice. Okay, so thank you, Sarah, again, and uh, another applause. <laughs>